This is my Jumper T16 radio, and uh, this in the back of my Jumper T16 is a Crossfire module. And if you're watching this video, you've got a Crossfire module in your Jumper T16, you've got a quadcopter with a Crossfire receiver in it, and... Huh? I'm you make a go with the flying and the going and the making the model. That's what you're going to do today. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is one of a series of videos about setting up and just living with the Jumper T16. There's a whole playlist of these videos, and I suggest if you found this one somehow and you haven't found the others, go down in the video description, check out that playlist. There's some things that you should have done when you first got your T16 that maybe you didn't do. And there's some just some setup tips and general guidelines. It's full of information. If you have a T16, I hope you'll watch every video in the playlist and love it. But in this video, we're gonna set up Crossfire. And in order for that to work, you need to make, you, there's a couple things you need to do first. First thing you need to do is, you're gonna wanna take your Crossfire module, plug it into your computer, on the Team Black Sheep store, or you can just Google, TBS Agent X. There's a piece of software called TBS Agent X. It is used to manage the firmware on all your TBS products. And if you've got Crossfire, then you definitely are gonna wanna have that. You're gonna wanna update your, TB, your Crossfire module to at least version, I think it's 293 or 294. I think they're shipping with 224 and there have been some big improvements. Their newest version is even newer than that. It's three point something and sure, go to the latest. But if you're not on at least 294, you should definitely do that. It has nothing to do with this. It'll You could do this whole video without doing that. I'm just saying, as long as you're here, you should do, definitely go do that. And the other thing you're gonna wanna make sure you've done is you're gonna wanna make sure you have the SD card contents on the SD card the radio shipped with the SD card contents, but if you've ever updated the firmware and you didn't also update the SD card contents, you're gonna to wanna to go download the correct SD card contents because the uh, Crossfire Lua script that we're gonna to use to configure the Crossfire system is on the SD card, and if you don't have the same SD card contents as me, it may be a little bit different. Okay, so then, we're gonna turn the radio on. Welcome to Jumper TX. You like my custom splash screen? I got I got a video about how to do a custom splash screen. It's in that playlist. Uh -huh. And right here you can see I've got loaded the FreeSky D16 model I created in my original video about setting up a new model and getting a new model set up with the radio. Now, what I told you in that video is that you can bind all your quadcopters to the same model. You don't need to have a separate model on your radio for every one of your crossfires. And in fact, what I recommended was that you set up all your quadcopters the same, arming mode, angle mode, etc., and then just bind them all to the same model here in the Jumper T16. Well, that's not quite gonna work because every time we go to a different receiver protocol, we need to have a different model. And the reason for that is if I just hold down the model key, notice that here in the model setup, one of the things I select is the RF protocol. And for each of the RF protocols, we wanna have a different model. Now, I'm gonna create a new model here and build the model from scratch, but I wanna let you know that if you created the FreeSky D16 model back in the other tutorial, what you can do is you can highlight that model, long press, and duplicate model. And it'll just copy that D16 model over, and then you won't have to reset up your aux modes or any of that stuff. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna set it up from scratch so you can follow along if you are starting from scratch. I'm gonna long press, and I'm going to create model. Is it a glider, is it a plane, none of the above. I'm just gonna hit the return key and back out and we'll set it up from scratch. And I'm going to, here we've got model 04 selected. I'm gonna long press the model key and I'm gonna name the model and I'm gonna name it, oh, too far, Crossfire. This is gonna be for all of my Crossfire models. Now this F happens to be uppercase. To switch from uppercase to lowercase, I'm gonna long press the button. I don't know why it's uppercase, but... Crossfire. Okay, great. And I'm gonna go down to 
where it says external RF. We want internal RF set to off and external RF set to crossfire. If you have internal RF set to uh, multi, you can't select crossfire for external RF. I'm not actually really sure why you can't do both of those at once, but you can't. So this is what we want here, and we're going to back out. Then I'm going to back all the way out, and I'm going to long press the sys key and press page to get to the SD card contents. I'm going to highlight the crossfire folder. On some of the newest versions of OpenTX, They've actually moved the Crossfire script into the Tools folder, so you may need to look for it there. But for, for this version, it's right here, Crossfire. And I'm going to highlight Crossfire.lua and long press and select Execute. And at this point, you should see XF Micro TX, and on the back of your radio, your Crossfire receiver or Crossfire module should be glowing yellow, just like you see here. And I'm going to hit the button. And this is where we can configure the Crossfire module. For example, you'll see I've got my max power set to 250 milliwatts. I've got dynamic power off. For quadcopters, that's how I recommend you have it set. For frequency, it'll be either 915 or 868, depending on whether you are in Europe or in the US. There also is apparently a Australian one. I don't know why that is. But if you're in the EU, you need to use 868. If you're in the US, you need to use 915. Uh, that's really, really important. If you don't do that right, you will, you will interfere with the cell towers and they'll interfere with you and you'll fail safe all over the place. Now, unlike many other kinds of receivers, FreeSky and FlySky specifically, you do not have to hold down the bind button on a Crossfire receiver while plugging it in in order to get it to go into binding mode. Crossfire has what you might call auto binding, which basically means that when you power up a Crossfire receiver, if it's bound and there's a radio there, it's just like, okay, I'm bound. But if you power up a crossfire receiver and it doesn't detect a radio, it goes automatically into binding mode. This doesn't always work 100% of the time. And sometimes you do, it's just like, why isn't it binding? And then you have to go push the button. But most of the time it works. Let's see if it works this time. It should, it should work. So we're going to go to binding and we're going to hit, click the button and it is binding now. And then we are going to plug in the battery. And in just a second, if everything goes right, we'll just automatically bind. Well, it's a good demonstration for what happens when it doesn't work the first time. All right, so once again, we're going to activate binding on the radio. Radio's in binding mode now. And we'll power up. We'll see if it magically works this time. Mm -mm. Oh, turns green and starts blinking. And binding OK. Now that your Crossfire receiver is bound, you're almost ready to fly, but there are still a few more steps. If you already set up a FreeSky D16 receiver, as in my previous video, you already know what those steps are. We need to set the endpoints and the centers for our channels, and we need to set the channel mapping, and we need to set up the aux mode so we can arm, disarm the quad, angle mode, turtle mode, etc. Rather than repeat those steps here in this video, I'm going to refer you to my FreeSky D16 video earlier in this playlist. The steps are exactly the same after you, for Crossfire, for D16, for any model, the steps are exactly the same. So I'm just going to, and there's a link to that down in the video description as well. Don't stop. You're not ready. Go watch like the, the last two thirds of that video to finish setting up this model. But that is, that's not, no, there's one more thing. Every like one out of 20, one out of 30 times I bind a Crossfire receiver, it doesn't go right. And this is especially true if I've had to change the firmware on the module that seems to make it more likely. The receiver doesn't seem to go into auto bind and when I press the bind button on it, it doesn't seem to bind either. Crossfire has a emergency recovery technique where you like, it's a special button press sequence with a special timing and that is used to recover from that situation. It hardly ever happens, but I'm telling you that it does occasionally happen so that if you get stuck at some point, you get frustrated, you'll remember this hopefully and you'll know uh, the link in the video description to the emergency recovery technique if you ever do need it. 
And that is going to bring us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. I hope that this playlist is helping you get the most out of this awesome radio. And I hope that my channel is helping you get the most out of whatever quads you're flying. That's my goal here. If you are learning a lot, if I've helped save you time, save you money, or solve a problem, can I remind you that I do have a Patreon. And you can join that Patreon for as little as $2 a month. Mostly, I just want it to be your way of saying, thank you, Josh, you've helped me. I feel like I want to give back. You do get access to my exclusive Discord server <laughs> for as little, dollars, as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I earned it. Uh, there's a link to that in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.